like playing, um, sometimes I like to play by myself. <laughs> so, um, sometimes people ask me, hey, what's your spirit animal? Any guesses? <laughs> I mean, guesses? Um, well, you know, the butterfly princess ninja demon, of course, is, is my usual reply. And anybody who knows anything, it's like, um, if there's something tiny in the world, there's probably a great big fire inside. You know that E equals MC squared thing? Well, you know, it's like we all have the same amount of the E, so it's got to be somewhere. So think twice before you piss off a tiny person. <laughs> you know, unless you want to start a forest fire. <laughs> So this little piece, this is an original piece, and this is called Once I Was a Wing. And maybe it was a wing, or maybe it was um, a couple wings. I don't know, listen closely and then you can tell me at the end, okay? <laughs> out of butterfly fabric. Butterfly fabric, not real butterflies. Though looking at it, you would never know the difference. Their wings were golden, and the backdrop, green. Little lace lines of black traced the edges of their patterned bodies, which aligned into rows as though pinned to the inside of the hunter's glass box. Open, clean, articulated, spacious, available, equipoised for view. They were caught in that moment just beyond the apex of a flutter when the surface area of their fragile form unfolds to the periphery, holding nothing back to be enjoyed by our melted, wanting eyes. Whirling pools of blue fraught with desire underneath the sky that melted the same. It all worked out quite nicely, the butterflies and I. They covered up my tender places and only came slipping away when we were both safely held in the ocean, warm, translucent, Foaming, leading. The top was like a harness and the bottom, a side wrap skirt that might flop this way and that. A perfect combination of boundaries that didn't uphold an unadulterated freedom. Alternately exposing and shrouding, exposing and shrouding, exposing and shrouding. With the rhythm of waves, I was fine with the exchange. As though we shared a well-kept secret, the butterflies and I that reaffirmed the budding intimacy of our relationship, so coquettish, so new. The butterflies and I, we danced all over the block. My pentagram sunglasses pointed the way, up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was in love with a boy and he gave me this gift. Last weekend, I was on my way to Wonder Valley. The wildflowers were outrageous with washes of violet and pops of yellow that told us where the whiteness in the road was just beginning. The landscape was dotted with abandoned massage parlors and vintage barber shops that called out in vibrant colors, turquoise, flamingo, pink, vibrant, dusty, empty. And there in the great nothing that nature affords so well, sky, sand, brush, desert brush, more brush, road, dust, road, sky, sand, Hollow, empty, clock was ticking. We were on our way to meet some blonde boys for brunch. You know, brunch with the blondies. Tall, dreamy blonde boys for brunch. Blondie, brondie, brawny, body, brunchy, raunchy, brunchy, lunchy, crispy, crunchy, blonde boys for brunch. <laughs> <laughs> with long wisps of hair. And time kept passing on, one tunnel into another. Question, do even the butterflies dream at night? Question. If they rest in the shade, do they still cast a shadow? Oh, Lepidoptera, Lepidoptera, always searching for liquid nutrition. Let me suckle on your salt. Oh, Lepidoptera, Lepidoptera, let me know your quiet ways. In the absence of water, these gentle creatures learn to explore other climes. 
The presence of sweat on human skin is very attractive to a strapping young butterfly. Or a trail of blood. Or a fallen tear. Back on the road, the windshield provided the perfect frame from which to view the world. It came in broadly, yet we were safe behind the glass. Nothing could touch us. We were on our way to destiny. Just two friends, yucca flower, desert lily, palm frond, Joshua tree, blue sky, blue sky, blue sky, passing by, passing by, passing by. Splat. Oh. <laughs> In the midst of movement, the first one found its way to death. Bright yellow and green hemolymph trickled down the bay. What was that? What was that? It had barely been visible a moment ago and now gone. I hadn't seen it fluttering, living, lurking, living, lurking. Oh, yellow blood. Where are you now, splat? Another one, splat. Then another. We kept clipping along. Five friends now, two living and three dead. Oh, my beloved butterfly. She has no blood vessels. Instead, there's a hollow space inside her exoskeleton in which her blood oozes around, oozes around, oozes around, pouring all the way up to her little antennas, down to her legs, out to her wings, pouring, pouring, pouring. In preparation for flight, the butterfly hangs upside down and pumps blood into the wings to inflate them. She must wait for her wings to dry before she can fly. Pouring, 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 oozing, pouring. It is nighttime in my tiny cabin, dark, starry, cold. I've left a candle burning. The colored wax melts hot. I'm in the middle of a dream. The room is small. A window is cracked. In a half hazy kind of way, I become semi-conscious. Open my eyes. Sliver, sliver, a narrow sliver of vision bordered by dark. Just enough to see her. Just enough to watch it happen. The winged one, she flew. She flew. She flew straight into the flame. Paralyzed with equal parts, horror and awe, I watched. Not sure what else to do, I watched. I watched, I watched. <sighs> Slowly she sizzled. to tiny things. So thank you for changing your space scale with me.